Are you ready to harness the immense power of the simple act of taking your temperature to help you in your quest to get pregnant? Hi, I'm Stephanie Roth. I'm a fertility coach with YourFertileSelf.com, and I'm a 47-year-old first-time mother of an almost four-year-old little boy. Now, what I'm going to share with you today might not be uh, new information for some of you, um, but for others of you, it might be the first time you've ever heard this, and I'm so excited to share it with you. This was all new information for me uh, when I was 41 years old, when I started trying to have a baby. At the time that I decided to start trying to have a baby, I didn't know anything about my cycles, my menstrual cycles, except how long they were. I really had no idea what was going on in my body from day one of my period to day one of my next period. I had no idea that there were different phases of my cycle. I had no idea hormonally what was going on in my cycle. And I had no idea that there were only certain days of the month that you could get pregnant. I thought you could get pregnant anytime you had sex. It's actually quite embarrassing to me to admit now that that's what I thought, um, but that is what I thought. So the first thing that I did when I was 41 years old and started uh, trying to conceive was I started to educate myself and I started to read about fertility and about the men women's menstrual cycle and I started to learn about my own cycle. And the first thing I did was I picked up a really wonderful book that I totally recommend to all of you. It's this one called Taking Charge of Your Fertility. It's written by a woman named Toni Weschler. She's a public health expert. She's a women's health expert. I read this book at the recommendation of a friend, and I have to say it changed my life. It blew the lid wide open on everything I thought about conception. Like I said, I thought you could get pregnant anytime you had sex. So when I read in this book that there were only certain days of the month that you could get pregnant, I was just shocked. Um, and it's just shocking to me now to look back and think that that's what I thought as a you know, middle-aged woman. So this book is immensely powerful. Um, what, what it can teach you, it will teach you everything you need to know about um, how to learn about your cycles. Um, I totally recommend it to everyone. So I started um, taking my basal body temperature every day. I started charting my cycles and really learning about my own cycles, my own patterns, what's normal for me, my own ovulation. Um, and this knowledge is incredible power um, on this fertility path. And I really do credit a lot of what I learned um, through charting my cycles. Um, to you know, really help me get pregnant in such a short period of time. So I totally recommend it for everyone, and I'm really excited to share more about it with you here today. So um, there's three reasons why I love temperature charting. Three reasons. It's cheap, it's easy, and it works. Totally accurate. So first, the cheap part. Charting your temperatures is really cheap. It doesn't cost a lot of money because you don't need a lot of special equipment to do it or special products to do it. All you need is a basal thermometer that you can get at any store with a pharmacy, Target, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, Kmart. Um, anywhere there's a pharmacy, you can buy a basal thermometer. They even have them on Amazon. This is mine. This is what it looks like. It looks like just kind of a basic thermometer. The reason you want a basal thermometer is because it is uh, designed to capture very subtle shifts in your temperature, which is actually um, you know, what you want on this path. So make sure you get a basal thermometer. You can find it, again, in any store with a pharmacy with the pregnancy tests, the ovulation tests. Uh, that's where you can find these babies. So definitely go pick one up. They're about seven bucks. It's really cheap, and this is all you need. So um, you don't need a lot of special equipment. You just need your thermometer, and then you need a way to record your temperatures and store them. You can write them down the old-fashioned way, um, and I certainly, um, you know, there's uh, no problem with doing that. 
or you know we're lucky to live in the era of smartphones you can also download a free app for your phone um, I love Fertility Friend but there's lots of other ones out there. Fertility Friend is the one that I used, um, but there's Glow, Kindara, Ovia. Um, there's just all kinds of apps out there. So pick which one um, you know you can understand, and which one you know kind of seems um, to work the best for you. Um, I personally liked Fertility Friend, but there's lots of choices out there. So all you need is your thermometer and your app which is on your phone. And that's all you need to get started. So your net investment so far has been like eight bucks. Second, it's easy. It's easy. Um, all you have to do is take your temperature every day and write it down or put it into your phone. Um, and that's all you have to do. And you get all this amazing information about your body and your cycles and, and your fertility um, just by taking your temperature every day. So here's what you do. Basal body temperature means your body temperature at rest. So you're going to take your temperature first thing in the morning when you first wake up. So before you do anything else, before you get out of bed, before you go to the bathroom, before you get a drink of water, before you roll over and kiss your husband or your partner good morning, before you do any of that, you're going to take your temperature because you want to capture your temperature when your body is at rest and it's still at rest very first thing in the morning. Once you start doing stuff, you're no longer completely at rest. So you wanna take your temperature first thing in the morning. And all you do is you've got your thermometer next to your bed. Once your alarm goes off, you just pop that thermometer in your mouth. And when it beeps, about 30 seconds later, you take your thermometer out of your mouth, you read the temperature that's on it, and you either write it down or you put it into your phone. And that's all you have to do, and you're done for the day. You're done until the next day. So it's very, 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 very easy. Third, it works. Taking your basal body temperature is so amazingly accurate in the information that it gives you about your cycles and your ovulation. If you're charting your temperatures, you're always going to know when you've ovulated. You're always going to know what is normal for you. If you see a temperature or some sort of information from taking your temperatures that is different from what you've seen before, you've got a little clue that there might be something going on with you that particular cycle. And if you see patterns of irregularity, you know that there might be something that you need to um, address with your doctor. Um, it's always going to tell you when you've ovulated. It's never going to miss that. Um, that's the great thing about the apps is that they can help you interpret the data. Um, I think it's a really good idea to have some of the basics in interpreting your charts because the apps are not always foolproof, but they can go a long way towards sort of helping you interpret your data and understand what your data are telling you. So what are your data telling you? It's really in understanding basal body temperature. It's very, uh, the key piece of information that you need to know is that there are basically two phases to your, month, to your monthly cycle after your period. The first phase of your cycle is called the follicular phase. And this is basically from the time that your period's over until the time that you ovulate. It's called the follicular phase. This is when your follicles are growing in your ovaries, your eggs are growing, they're starting to mature, they're getting ready um, for ovulation, you know, really gearing up for that process of ovula ovulation and hopeful fertilization. Um, the follicular phase is when your eggs and your follicles are growing. This phase of your cycle is dominated by the hormone estrogen. Estrogen is a cooling hormone. So your temperatures during this phase of your cycle are going to be lower because your body is cooler. The second half of your cycle or the second part of your cycle after you ovulate before uh, day one of your next period 
This is called the luteal phase. And this phase of your cycle is dominated by the hormone progesterone. Progesterone is um, a hotter hormone and it generates more heat in your body. So your temperatures are going to be higher. So follicular phase, pre-ovulation, your temperatures are kind of down here, they're lower, they're estrogen. The second part of your cycle is the luteal phase. After ovulation, your temperatures are going to kind of be more up here, dominated by the hormone progesterone. So this is what you're going to see when you chart your temperatures. You're going to see the lower temperatures in the first part of your cycle, and you're going to see the higher temperatures in the second part of your cycle. And the day that you see the big shift in your temperatures from low to high, that is the day of ovulation. So let me show you one of my charts right here. As you'll see, this is kind of, this is an older chart of mine. This is from 2013. Um, and you can see right here, my temperatures are much lower. Um, and then in the second part of my cycle, you can see that my temperatures are much higher. So this is the follicular phase uh, that was dominated by estrogen. Temperatures are lower. And this is the luteal phase. After ovulation, my temperatures are higher because of the progesterone. And you can see here on day 10, I had a really big spike in my temperature. It went from down here all the way to up there the next day. So that is the day that I ovulated. Now, if you um, are successful in achieving a pregnancy a conception in a given cycle, your temperatures are going to remain elevated. Your body is going to keep producing progesterone to um, you know, facilitate implantation um, and to keep growing your embryo and then your fetus. Um, your body just keeps producing that progesterone, so your temperatures stay higher. So, um, but if you did not achieve a conception, as I did not in this cycle, this was not a pregnancy cycle for me, um, your temperatures are going to go back down and you'll get your period and the cycle will start over again. So in a nutshell, that's what your temperatures are telling you and what you want to be looking for. Um, I'm going to do a more detailed video about chart interpretation um, and what exactly your charts can tell you um, through the temperatures. But for now, that's the basics of that's kind of what you need to know. Your temperatures are lower the first part of your cycle and higher in the second part of your cycle. And the day of the temperature shift is the day of ovulation. So what are some things that um, helpful hints that you need to know about taking your basal body temperature? It's very important to, there's just a few basic guidelines that it's very important to follow in charting your temperature um, to really make sure that you get accurate data. Basically, the process of taking your basal body temperature every day is a process of collecting data. And you want to make sure that your data are accurate. And you want to make sure that your data are consistent. So it's very, very, very important to be consistent in taking your temperature. That means that you want to take your temperature at the same time every day. So, and this, the reason for this is because your temperature will increase um, as the morning goes on. So if you take your temperature at five o'clock one morning and nine o'clock the next morning, you're not going to have two consistent data points um, to really be able to draw any kind of meaningful conclusion or do any meaningful kind of analysis. So if you take your temperature, if you get up at like six o'clock during the week to go to work, then yes, you're going to need to get up at six o'clock on the weekends to take your temperature. You need to do it at the same time every day. The good news is a lot of these thermometers, these basal thermometers, will store your temperatures for you. So on the weekend, when you would rather be sleeping in, all you have to really do is just set your alarm for your normal temperature taking time. When the alarm goes off, just pop the thermometer in your mouth. It only takes 30 seconds to a minute. When the thermometer beeps, you can take it back out and put it back on your nightstand and roll over and go back to sleep. You can look at the data, you can look at the temperature later because it will be stored on your thermometer. 
So you need to be consistent and do it at the same time every day. Second, you need to remember to take your temperature before you do anything else. Once you do something else, your body is no longer completely at rest, so you're not going to get a completely accurate temperature. And if you've been taking all your other temperatures when your body's been at rest, it's an inconsistent data point and, um, you know, really would need to be discarded or at least make a note, um, you know, that you didn't do it first thing. But try to remember to do it first thing. It's very, very, very important. Third thing to remember um, is that there's so many things that can affect our temperatures. Um, how we slept the night before, if we're ill, if we're traveling and we're in a different time zone, and also just um, you know the effect that traveling can have on our bodies can affect our temperatures. Um, there's so many things that can affect our temperatures and therefore our ovulation. We most of the time are not able to control these things. Um, so it's, we should still continue with taking our temperatures as normal and just note on our chart, um, oh, I didn't sleep well that night or something. So that when we go back and analyze our chart, if we do see um, some inconsistencies in data or something strange about a particular temperature, we'll have a reference point as to the reason why. It's also important to know that in the beginning, um, when you first start charting your temperatures, you're not going to be able to use temperature charting as a predictive tool. Taking your temperature does not tell you when you're going to ovulate. It only confirms ovulation after it's happened. Once you see that temperature rapid, that big temperature change, and it's, your temperature stays elevated for three or four days, that's when you know that you've ovulated. You're not going to know beforehand that ovulation is coming. Now having said that, after a few months of charting, um, you'll, have, you'll start to get a handle on patterns in your cycle. You'll start to get a handle on kind of when you usually ovulate. So you'll be able to recognize what's normal for you and you will start to be able to use it as a predictive tool. But in the beginning, um, you're not going to be able to use charting to tell you that you're ovulating. You're only going to be able to use it to confirm that it's already happened. So it's very important to continue charting but also to use it in conjunction with other um, tools to track your fertility. For example, I love um, tracking cervical fluid. So doing temperatures in conjunction with tracking your cervical fluid, those two just work great together because tracking your cervical fluid um, will tell you that ovulation is coming. When you start to see fertile quality cervical fluid, fluid, you know, white or egg white or very wet cervical fluid, you'll know that you're in your fertile window. And so you won't be surprised then when you start to see your temperatures go up. Um, but you're not going to be able to use the temperatures alone. A great thing about Fertility Friend and many of the apps is that they do have a place where you can enter in the quality of your cervical fluid. So you have one place to really look at all of your data holistically, all of your data together. Um, but until you start to get a handle on your own cycles and your own patterns, you're not going to be able to use temperature charting alone as a predictive tool for ovulation. I hope that this has been helpful for you. As I said, I'm going to do another video with kind of more detail about interpreting your charts and really how to interpret your charts. Um, but I hope that this introduction to temperature charting has been useful for you. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to comment below. You can also send me an email at stephanie at yourfertilesouth.com. As you can see, this is an amazingly powerful tool. It has a lot of potential um, in helping you really take control over your cycles, take control over your fertility, take control over your reproductive health. Um, nature has given us amazing tools in our bodies um, to help us um, learn so much um, about our own bodies and our own fertility. So let's take advantage of the power of nature and really harness um, doing that to help us in our quest to conceive. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.